My name is John Sherd from University of Lancaster, and I'm going to talk about a book called Labyrinths, a volume of astonishing short stories by the Argentinian author Borges. Labyrinths is a selection of stories that Borges himself makes in 1962, but includes stories first published as early as 1940. I say stories, but many of the texts in Labyrinths are close to being something other than stories essays perhaps, or parables or riddles, texts in which what matters are ideas. And one idea which is very conspicuous throughout the collection is the idea of infinity or the infinite. It's an idea that a labyrinth takes many forms or manifestations, but I'll focus on just three, infinite memory, infinite library, and infinite book. First, infinite memory. In the story called Funes the Memorias, we encounter a young man who remembers everything, not only everything in his own life, every day, every thought, every experience, but everything he has ever learned from books. Even, for example, the formation of the clouds at dawn on the 30th of April, 1882. So much for infinite memory. What though of infinite library? Well, in the story called The Library of Babel, we encounter a library that has everything, every book, true books, false books, books about books, even books about books about books, not to mention books of which we could only dream, such as the autobiographies of angels or detailed accounts of the history of the future. As I say, then, an infinite library. And it's one which leads us to the idea of the infinite book. For in the same story, the Library of Babel, we are told that on some shelf of the universe, there must just be the a total book, a book one presumes that is about everything. What then do we make of these various infinities? And is there a clue in the fact that so many of the stories in Labyrinths were first published during World War II? a war fueled by the dream of infinite power. Well, we do get a glimpse of just such a dream in the story called The Lottery in Babel, which is about a country in which the lottery is compulsory for everybody but the elite, and in which those who lose could be sentenced to death. So, welcome to Nazi Germany, perhaps. Welcome to consumer capitalism, perhaps. It's certainly welcome to the labyrinth or labyrinths, that being, of course, Borges' master word, the title he himself chooses for the volume. So what is it about labyrinths? Well, they're complex, intricate, and difficult to negotiate, much then like these stories. But Torga labyrinths also takes us back to that most famous labyrinth, the labyrinth, which, according to myth, has at its very centre one who is half man, half bull, the Minotaur, offspring of union between a snow white bull and a queen overcome by desire for the bull. So if labyrinths involve Minotaurs, then they also involve desire or love, albeit of a literally brutal kind. And labyrinths must also mean death, for, of course, the mythical Minotaur is killed, or perhaps we should say slaughtered. The Minotaur, writes Borges, scarcely defended himself. This is death of a brutal kind. So, to draw to a close, labyrinths seem to involve both love and death. And in Borges' labyrinths, both love and death are not surprisingly, a remade in the image of the infinite. Infinite love, infinite death. For infinite death, just take a look at the very last words of the story called Ragnarok. We took out our heavy revolvers and joyfully killed the gods. Gods don't die just like that. A god's death is surely some kind of infinite death. And as for infinite love, just take a look at the story called The House of Asterion, 
a house that has an infinite number of doors, all of which are open day and night so that anyone may enter. A house that is so completely open, so completely welcoming, is surely some kind of infinite love. Another name for infinite love is perhaps God. Cue the words, I know my Redeemer lives, words which Borges takes from the Bible, the book of Job. This though for Borges is not the end of the matter. For he adds, what will my Redeemer be like? Will he perhaps be a bull with the face of a man? For Borges in God, it seems, infinite love meets infinite strangeness.